Hey, it's good to be back with you again today here in uh, New Life Family Center here in Sherwood, Sherwood, Oregon, that is, and uh, really excited about what we're going to be talking about today and the next several weeks. Um, I got to tell you, in our staff meetings on Tuesday, that that uh, entails myself and, and Pastor Adam and Shahela, our worship leader, you've seen her on the music videos. Uh, we get together every Tuesday, we, we plan with the church, and we talk about the church, and we pray, and those kind of things, and Lately, we've been in these discussions because we feel like um, church in general, and not just us, but church in general is kind of stagnant. Um, I think nationwide, uh, not, and not every church, and we haven't been in every church, but we feel like there's right now, especially in this quote, quote unquote pandemic COVID time, uh, where attendances aren't happening, they're on video, so they're not in person and you, you miss that person-to-person -person contact and that life that's, that comes that's not through a camera and a screen. Um, and it, it's, we, we're meeting here, obviously, at the church, and, you know, we're, we're, we don't have all of our people, not even close. And by the way, I'll say it again this week, we miss everyone, and we look forward to gathering together uh, in the near future. Hopefully, it all works out to where uh, the COVID gets better or, and or you feel comfortable wearing a mask or whatever it is for you, but but we are best. We want you to continue to know that. And all of our friends who aren't in Sherwood, aren't in this area and can't get here. I know, uh, again, talking to some friends of buying a drive truck and those kind of things, they're hoping at some point to be in the near area of Sherwood on a Sunday morning and can join us. So with that said... We've been talking and praying, and we feel like God's been leading us down this direction. And one of the things that in, that I have had that God put in my heart clear back when we were pastoring in Estacada, and we used this in, in material then, was it talks about our desire for you and I to have an encounter with God. Now, let me read what's what's in our stuff. And this is on, on our, our screens every Sunday as it's scrolling through the announcements. And I think sometimes we can stop and, and miss this, but it says, our desire is that everyone have an encounter with the living God, the one who can change your life. Seek him and you will find him. Ask him and you will receive. Come close to him and he will come close to you. That's very, very true. In the last couple parts of those, is, is, you know, obviously scripture. It's, it's direct scripture. But I've always felt that was my job, and I tell this to our worship leader, uh, whether it's uh, who we have now or ones in the past, that it's our responsibility as pastor, worship leader, um, you know, anybody who's speaking to, to lay the groundwork and the foundation for, for the people who come that want to, that, that we, we set the table, so to speak, for the, so they can have an encounter with God. And so today that's what we're going to be talking about is having an encounter with God. Now, with that said, with you watching it this week, uh, on Wednesday night, uh, this is Sunday because we're recording on Thursday, um, but this Wednesday night we'll be starting the new series that Terry will be doing through the Zoom uh, Wednesday night Bible studies. And it's, it's a book by Francis Chan called Letters to the Church. I have, Terry was really excited about it. She began to tell me about it and what it was including. And again, if you're not part of our church, uh, like on a weekly basis or you can, can't get here, feel free to go out and, and get this uh, called Letters to the Church. It's a, it's a small book. It's not huge. It's, it's a fairly easy read um, in the sense that, you know, we're reading a couple chapters a week. And so by Wednesday, we want you to have the first two chapters read. But there's some things in the, in the very first chapter that I've highlighted in my reading. And I've, I've asked the staff to read this. Uh, so the staff includes uh, um, Kiera, Adam's wife, who works with our children. And we're all, you know, we, for different reasons, we've got different things going on. Um, Shahela at times has made it to Wednesday night meetings. For me, I'm in bed by 5 uh, in, the, in the meeting. Start. Adam, the meeting started at 6, right? Yeah, six o'clock. So feel free to to look us up. Send us a message with that, um, and I would love to know. Or you send us a message, excuse me, through through our emails, through our Facebook, through um, our websites. 
Website's kind of being funky, trying to get it fixed. Uh, but send us a, a message and we'll be glad to get you a link and the password to be part of those Zoom calls as well. But I want to start today because this, is, this has got me really excited and I've, I've been sitting here with you know my Bible and a ton of paper here and material. Usually I come for about 20 minutes. Uh, that's kind of our goal to stay within that. I hope I can today because uh, I am excited. There's a lot here and we're going to continue to get to this over the next few weeks. But in this book um, by Francis Chan, uh, one of the things is he he was uh, pastoring one of the largest, not one of the largest, but a mega church, we would call it, in America. And it was it was huge. And he just felt like he needed to leave and he and his family went out of the country and did ministry for a while. And then they have come back and they are in now in San Francisco, right? At the writing of this, where he's talking about. And he writes this. He says, it felt like we jumped out of the Bible. We were experiencing something in America that was congruent with what we read about in the New Testament. We felt alive on the adventure of the required faith, and it was right here in our backyard. He talks about asking his kids what they felt after their first outreach. Uh, uh, Rachel, his oldest daughter, blurted out, it feels like we jumped out of the Bible and the rest of it. And it, it, it was exciting to them uh, as kids to experience. And I know my kids feel the same way. One of the things that, where we're kind of jumping off in all of this is in our prayer time on Tuesdays, one of the things, again, the word, I want you to key hang on to the word encounter and the word expecting, expect. Um, those are some key words that we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks. You're going to hear me referring to them. You heard me read what is on our announcements. Every scrolling as you will come in, you'll see this announcement about hoping that you have an encounter when you come to church. And I know that even I have just kind of gone past it. But I really believe it was something the Lord had planted in my heart. Like I said, a couple churches ago, and we start using, he wants us to connect with him. He wants us to have an encounter, whether we are um, uh, in our own Bible study, in our own prayer time, uh, in corporate gatherings where, where, uh, where we worship corporately, we hear the word corporately, we respond corporately uh, in a group. And that's important. And, and that's why I think I really would would urge those who are, are, are not attending right now. And again, if it's our church or you're watching this, you attend other churches, uh, I, I would encourage you to think about um, connecting with, with your church if they're meeting together. Um, again, at this church, you can wear a mask. It's not a problem. You can social distance. Not a problem. You don't have to shake hands. Not a problem. You know, but we're lacking something because you're not here. But we're also, God is beginning to move. Last week, uh, Trevor led us in worship. Uh, it was really good. Um, just, we're lucky to have people leading us like uh, Trevor and Shahela. Um, Trevor's our fill-in, kind of, he's been helping us out. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this week as well. But we met this past week, and I was talking about, as a staff, I was talking about the word encounter. And Shahela brought up the word expecting and talks about, you know, when she goes to uh, times of worship for refreshing herself, she goes with expecting and God shows up. Adam and I and every youth pastor I've ever known talk about the camp experience for our, our youth, our teenagers, or uh, we call it youth convention, usually in October, uh, where they go and they all gather from all across the state. And there's an expectation that is happening. And I really believe that's why God does what he does in powerful ways in these teenagers' life. Every camp. Now, not every every student is encountered the same way. Um, some don't go with that expectation. They go with heavy hearts. They go with attitudes. They go with the world on their mind. And they may not encounter that. But I would just tell you, that's what I'm telling you, whether you're at our church or another church. And, and even if you're at home and you're watching these videos, are you expecting an encounter, a connection with God today? Did you come 
into this video with that. Uh, I would challenge the people uh, in the building Sunday. Did you come expecting? Did you come? And we talked about some of this. We, we started last week with this. Let me continue in the book, uh, Letters to the Church, where Francis Chan continues to write. I've highlighted like, three things that I want to make sure we read today. And he said, um, there are times when God hates our worship. Wow, now that really made me stop in my tracks and reading. I'm like, what? But he goes on and says, there are churches he wants shut down. So often we assume that as long as we show up to worship, God is pleased. And the Bible tells a different story. And he lists uh, quite, a, quite a few scriptures, quite honestly, uh, on, on how that, that's different. And, and I would tell us, not out of fear today or anything like that, but I think we've been missing something here at the church, all churches, um, and I would just be curious to know how it changes when we come expecting even more so. And so with that, we're going to continue to move on, but I'm excited about if we come expecting God to move like he does at youth camps, like he does at what we call youth conventions. If he comes doing that, what are we going to experience as adults? It seems like as adults, sometimes um, we have a situation where we, we don't want to experience, we've experienced it all, we just come and do our thing. And church is important to it to us, but what becomes important is the people that we're going to see. I'm not saying people shouldn't be important. I think the Bible tells us in a big way to, to love one another. But are we coming to encounter him? Are we coming with anticipation? You know, if we're full of sin, are we coming with a sense of almost anxiety? Like, oh man, I can't be in God's presence. My heart is wrong. Or we come with such an attitude, I'm going to be that way. I don't care. God's not going to touch me. He's not going to make me be different. Openness of, of children and teenagers at, at these events, coming to God. We call it the altar when people come up front. It's, it's a biblical term, you know. But are we open to encountering God? The one last thing that I want to read you from Francis Chan's book today says, The pieces come from knowing God more deeply than ever. While I believe I have loved Jesus for years, it feels totally different now. Lately, I have become obsessed with knowing God and experiencing him. Is that your life today? Are you obsessed with knowing and experiencing him? And up until today, I will tell you, that has not been my heart. Now, everything, I haven't read the whole book yet. As a matter of fact, I've only got through the first chapter, I'll be honest. I got one more to read before Wednesday. But in reading the words, it, it's challenging. Now, you may feel that you have been cool. This isn't like everybody stinks in, in their walk and in their relationship with the Lord. And it's not what I'm saying. But I think one of the things we need to do when we come to church is self-examination. And when the when the speaker, the preacher gives us the word or we're, we're singing worship songs and there, there are these words, we should be reflecting them through our heart. The Spirit should be stirring us to reflection. Now, let me be honest with you. One of the things that I've always told my churches that it's hard for me and almost impossible for, impossible for me to preach when I'm you know, going through the Word without having that Word filter through me before I ever get there on Sunday. And, you know, this is some of that stuff, some of that material that's been piling up on my desk I'm going to close with this today. We're at about 15 minutes or so. we got a few. But I want to talk about expecting. Okay? We're going to talk about these words in more, more depth down the road. 
But when we talk about expecting, there's a bunch of uh, prophetic scriptures that talk about the coming of Jesus, the coming of the Messiah, the the coming of the Savior. He is coming. I grabbed a few, to be honest with you. I'm not even close to a bunch of them. Um, I'm sure Adam will throw the references up, and I'll try to go slow. But I'm, I'm not here to just, we're not tearing apart one of these scriptures. But let me throw a few at you to show you that there was an expectation in, in the times of, of before Jesus and, and the Old Testament, and they're talking about this. And people are becoming excited as the teachers teach these things. Isaiah 9, 6 said, For us, to, a child is born, to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It goes on to say, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. The Lord says, Bethlehem, I, I love this. I really, really like this because we're a small church. You know what? Not church of, of thousands. And I love this. It says, the Lord says, Bethlehem, you might not be in an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come a ruler over Israel for me. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. It goes all the way back to the days long ago. Micah 5.2. Don't you love that? I really hope we have time. We're going to talk, you know, another another time about some of the stories that are in the Bible. Matter of fact, that's where a lot of this started. My mind began to go to some of the things that God used, uh, things that were not, you know, the biggest or the best or or what things you wouldn't expect. And God's doing these miraculous things through. Let's get like three more in here, and we'll close today. But I want us, if you haven't come today, expecting. I, will, I want you to be prayerfully come next week expecting, come Wednesday night expecting. I think this book could, if we allow it, uh, some of the concepts could really change us, could change our church, could change us as individuals, could change us collectively. God wants new and fresh things happening. And I, I could go with the whole new wine and new wineskin thing. We need to teach on that. Because I think that's what God can be doing through some of this stuff is opening our eyes. Here's the fourth one. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Hosea 11.1 1. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come forth from Jacob, and a scepter shall rise from Israel, shall crush through the forehead of Moab, and tear down all the sons of Sheph. Numbers 24, 17. And finally, the last one that I've, I've grabbed today. May the kings of Tarshish and the distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all the kings bow down to him, and all the nations serve him. Psalm 72, 10 through 11. And those gifts they're talking about become foretold. They come to pass through, through the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh. We're going to tell that story here in a couple months. We're going to talk about the wise men that came. And here it's talking about those doing that. I want to, I want this to be something that changes us. You know, so many times... And I get it, I I do, but I will ask people and I will say, what was the sermon on last week and they can't remember. I hope whether you know the bullet points of the sermon or everything, you can remember the main thought. And today the main thought is come expecting. Come expecting to have an encounter, two E's. Expect an encounter. Come looking for Jesus. Come looking for God, the Holy Spirit, to move in our lives, to speak to us. And here it is in the definition out of Webster's, in there it says expect. It says uh, we expect the best, using the sentence. And here it is, anticipate, await, 
look for, hope for, watch for, look forward to. You know, when was the last time you looked forward to coming to church to have an encounter with God? Not just your friends, not just, you know, some of the things that are going on, you and whatever you like or don't like, you know. Maybe you like the music, maybe you like the preacher, maybe you like your friends, maybe. You, when was the last time, this is a challenge, not a put down, when was the last time you remember being excited and coming with expectation to come to church, expecting something to happen. That's our challenge. Come Wednesday night, expecting God to do some cool stuff. Come next Sunday, whether you're gonna be here in person with us or you're going to be online watching the video, come expecting. God can touch you wherever you're at, whether you're in the church building, whether you're at home, whether you're in a truck on the road, whether you're in a different state, whether you're in a different country, God can touch you right where you're at. Expect him to touch you. Let's close today. Father, I thank you. I thank you that uh, you want to be a part of our lives. You want to be there. You want to have an encounter with us even more than we want it. And Lord, I pray that we're not just looking for um, specific good things to happen to us, but things to happen, period. Change us, mold us, make us like you want us. I pray for each one of us today that we come expecting you and want whatever you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope to uh, see, well, I won't see you Wednesday night. I hope Terry sees you Wednesday night. I hope you've had that encounter. And uh, we'll see you definitely next Sunday. Have a great week.